You've gotten a little taste of how to solve a, a square root equation in previous lessons, particularly word problems. We're going to get a little more advanced today on how to solve a square root equation, oftentimes called radical equations, because the square root sign is called a radical. So to solve the square root of x plus 2 plus 4 equals 7, uh, the main process, the main thing that you'll learn today is do what's called isolate the radical on one side of the equation, or just simply isolate the radical. To isolate something means to put it by itself, so that's what we're going to do is that we're going to try to move everything to one side of the equation where just the square root sign is on one side of the equation. Then we can square both sides to cancel that out and solve the equation like that. So on this one, we're first going to subtract 4 from both sides. And by subtracting 4 from both sides, we'll have the square root of x plus 2 equals, and 7 minus 4 is 3. And now that the square root is by itself, we will square both sides of the equation. And by squaring both sides of the equation, squaring cancels out the beans, the square root, leaving us with just x plus 2 equals 3 squared is 9. And then subtract 2 from both sides because it turns into a fairly simple equation after that and we get x equal to 7. So there, that looks like our answer. Remember what we're doing here is that when we solve, we're actually trying to figure out what number we could replace x with to make it a true sentence. So we can check this by replacing the x in the original equation with what we just figured out, which we just figured out is a 7. So replace that x with a 7. So that becomes the square root of 7 plus 2 plus 4 on the outside. Does that really equal 7? And 7 plus 2 is 9, so that becomes the square root of 9 plus 4. Does that really equal 7? Square root of 9 is 3, and 3 plus 4 does equal 7, so it does check out. So x equals 7 is definitely our answer. Let's try another one. So 5 equals the square root of x minus 2 minus 1. So remember, we're going to isolate the radical and get that radical by itself. So I should add or 1 to both sides. So that gives me 6 equals the square root of x minus 2. So the square root is by itself. So we can now square both sides. And 6 squared is 36. That equals, now that the square root and the squaring is canceled, we're just left with x minus 2. And then we'd add 2 to both sides. And we would get 38. So 38 equals x. And remember, we can check that by plugging it into the original problem. So I'll just copy that over here. And we will replace that x with what we got, a 38. So replace the x with a 38. Minus 2, minus 1. Is that really true? So 38 minus 2 is 36. So does 5 really equal the square root of 36 minus 1? And the square root of 36 is 6. Does 5 really equal 6 minus 1? Sure does. 6 minus 1 is 5. So this does check out. So this is the answer, x does equal 38. So let's try this one. So notice on this one that we have two radicals, we have two square roots, and that means we cannot ra uh, isolate the radical on one side because even if I move this square root of x over to the other side, that means I have two square roots on that side of the equation, and that means that they're not isolated. They're not on one side of the equation by itself. So what I need to do on this one is I'm going to go ahead and square both sides because the radical on the left side is already isolated. When I square the right side, that's how I should write it because I'm going to square both the 2 and the negative square root of x. So everything gets squared on the right side. So those will cancel, and that will leave you with this square just the x minus 12, not the square root of x minus 12, just x minus 12 equals, when I square root the right side, I can't just do the 2 squared and the square root of x squared. 
I do have a binomial, which means I need to double distribute it. So I'm going to write it out twice. And do a double distribute, so that means I'll take 2 times 2, and that equals 4. 2 times negative square root of x is negative 2 square root of x. And then negative square root of x times 2 is another negative 2 square root of x. And then negative square root of x times negative square root of x. So it is a negative times a negative, which means it will be a positive answer. And the square root of x times itself is just x. And then when I combine like terms, I have 4 minus negative 2 square root of x and negative 2 square root of x are like terms, so that's negative 4 square root of x plus the x. And remember that equals what was on the left side, which was x minus 12. So I'll just go ahead and bring down the left side all the way down. And now I have eliminated one of the radicals. So now I'm going to eliminate the other radical, the other square root, by moving everything to the left side other than the square root of x. So I can subtract 4 from both sides. And that will cancel out these 4s, so that will give me x minus 16 equals negative 4 square root of x plus x. I'm going to subtract this x from both sides, so I'll put it under the x that's over here, and it actually will cancel out both of them, so that's nice. So I will have negative 16 equals negative 4 square root of x. Still don't have the radical quite isolated, so I need to divide by negative 4. And 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4, so that's 4 equals the square root of x. Finally, I can square both sides. So that will cancel out the square root portion of it, so I will have 16 equals x. And there we go. There's our apparent answer. Remember what that means is that we can literally take the original problem, replace the x into that problem, and it should work out. We should get a equation, a true equation, uh, the same number on both sides. So if I replace the x with that 16 that I just got, so 16 minus 12, does that really equal? 2 minus the square root of, and replace that x with a 16. So 16 minus 12 is 4, so I have the square root of 4. Does that really equal 2 minus, and the square root of 16 is just 4. And square root of 4 is 2, so does 2 equal 2 minus 4? Well, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, not positive 2, it's negative 2. So is 2 the same as negative 2? It is not. 2 does not equal negative 2, so this does not check. Handwriting a little sloppy today. So this does not check. So since it does not check, we've come up with what's called an extraneous solution. What an extraneous solution is, is a solution that is derived from the original problem We've done nothing wrong. We didn't screw up any of our signs. Everything was done perfectly, but our answer just simply does not fit the original problem. So since we only have one solution, but that solution turns out to be extraneous and does not fit the original problem, that means there are actually no solutions to this equation. Now, sometimes you might get two solutions. You'll derive two solutions, but only one of them works. So that one is actually the real solution. Sometimes both solutions are work, and sometimes neither solution works. So the bottom line is, is that with radical equations, you do need to check all your solutions from the original problem to make sure that they do fit the original problem.